Today, I wanna to talk about one of my most used plugins for Unraid, and also a plugin that I've had quite a few questions on, and that is unassigned devices. In the description down below, you will find some affiliate links to Plex. Now with these affiliate links, you can not only create a free user account, but you can also use those links to purchase Plex passes. Now a Plex pass has a lot of different benefits to it, but one of my most favorite features of the Plex pass is being able to get early access to new and exclusive features. In fact, sometimes they even keep some features to those premier members only. Yes, again, they are affiliate links with Plex and they do help my channel, whether you create a free Plex account or buy a lifetime Plex Pass subscription. So if you feel like clicking some links down there, I much appreciate it. What's up YouTube? Jason here with Bite My Bits and in today's video, In today's video, I'm going to talk about unassigned devices that you can install onto Unraid. The reason why I'm talking about this is because I've had a few different questions and most of those questions answers are related to me using unassigned devices with Unraid, especially with Plex, because the way I have it set up, I rely on unassigned devices to work for me. Before I jump into that, what is unassigned devices? Well, just so I stop saying unassigned devices a million times, I'm just gonna call it UD. UD is basically a plugin that you can install onto your Unraid server that allows you to take a drive that's already in that Unraid server, but not assigned to your array, and basically have it as a side-mounted drive. An extra drive doing its own thing, but not part of the collective. Now for me, UD was very easy to install. I went into my plugins, I installed community applications, and then I just searched for unassigned devices from there and boom, it was easy. But the beauty with UD is that I can use extra drives or even extra SSDs and utilize those specific SSD or drives for certain things that maybe I don't want to use the array for. And getting that set up to that point is also really easy. For example, I installed a two terabyte junk drive that I have just to show you the process of setting up the new drive and even sharing it. So from this screen, you will see that I already have the two terabyte drive installed to my Unraid server. If I click this little drive icon to the left that has the plus sign on it, it will expand the name of that drive. In this particular example, I'll just name it a two terabyte crap drive. Once you put your name in and you hit enter, the screen will refresh and then boom, your name is saved. And then from here, all you have to do is click the mount button. That's gonna do exactly what it sounds, mount the drive and allow the server to use it. Now, just for this example, and you don't have to follow it exactly, I did set it to auto mount. That way, anytime I restart Unraid, it will automatically mount back up. And I also set it to share. Of course, I click the top share, but I think realistically, all you have to do is click the share after you expand and you have the one right next to the name. So to further this example, I will bring up my file explorer and you can see within my Zeus directory, I have the new created share called two terabyte crap drive. I can read and write and create and delete and do all kinds, just like a regular normal network drive, except it's not part of the array that's already built into the Unraid server. This is a completely separate entity that I could do with as I wish. So now that you've seen how it's set up, how it's used and how you can you know, browse to that location and manipulate files just like you would any network drive, let me give you some other examples as to why it is useful for me. So if we go through this list of my other unassigned drives that I actually assigned to be separate from my array, you can see that I use them for various things. As in one, I have set up specifically just to be a virtual machine SSD. The next one I have set up to only be used by the Plex data folder. And don't get the Plex data folder confused with the Plex media folder, because that's the main array. This is only for the metadata that Plex uses to operate. Then the next one down is a spare four terabyte that I had that was initially waiting to be used just in case another drive failed. But you know, since Western Digital is so awesome, I never needed it. So what I did is I took that drive, side mounted it, of course, set it up as a share, and then I made it to where my virtual machine that runs my security camera software, the NVR, using that network drive as its storage location for any videos that it captures. You know, just in case I wanna access that folder separately from the VM and access those stored video files. But anyways, that's what I use this for. One for VMs, one for the Plex data folder, and then one for all of the stored video files from my NVR. And this is great 
for me because there's various reasons for each application where I don't want to use my main array. Obviously, Plex is not going to perform as good if it's running off of a regular hard drive stored in my array. And as far as my VMs, they're obviously going to run a lot faster off an SSD. And as for the storage locations for the cameras, it really just boils down to I don't want it always spinning up my array and always writing data when I can just not really care about whatever's on that four terabyte drive. I mean, let's be honest, if I lost that data, it's not gonna be detrimental unless, you know, somebody gets murdered on my front lawn. So UD has a lot of applications, things that you could use spare drives while in the same server, but not attached to the same array. Multiple different uses, easy to use, and overall, probably one of my most relied on plugins that I have installed on Unraid, aside from Plex, of course, because it's Plex. And that's more of a docker anyways. So guys, I hope that was helpful, especially to those who emailed me asking me how to, you know, utilize a separate drive for the Plex data folder or how I'm running VMs off something that's not the actual built-in cache drive to the array. Call it a quick tip, call it a power user move. I don't know, but whatever it is, it's easy to do, it's easy to use, and it is definitely a great thing to have. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, of course, post them down below. So thank you for watching, like, and subscribe, and have yourself a good night.